In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a story that one day St. Augustine, the son of St. Monica, was walking along the seafront, as you do. He was contemplating the mystery of the Holy Trinity. He was trying to work out arguments for a new book that he was trying to write, explaining the Blessed Trinity. Suddenly, Augustine caught sight of a small boy running back and forth between the sea and the beach. The boy was using a shell to try and carry the water from the ocean into a small hole he had dug in the sand. St. Augustine approached the child and asked, My boy, what are you doing? The boy, with an honest face and a gentle smile, replied, I'm trying to bring all the sea into this hole. But that is impossible. The hole cannot contain all the water, said St. Augustine. The boy paused in his work, stood up, looked into the eyes of the saint and replied, It's no more impossible than what you are trying to do, to comprehend the immensity of the mystery of the Holy Trinity with your small intelligence. When Augustine glanced back down to follow up with another question, the boy had vanished. The Christ child himself had appeared to St. Augustine to remind him that even a great mind like his was limited and inadequate before the greatest and deepest mystery of our holy faith. The Holy Trinity is indeed the most beautiful mystery of our holy religion. But when I call the Holy Trinity a mystery, I'm not saying it's it's something we can't know or say anything about, you know, a bit like saying the existence of the Loch Ness Monster is a mystery. Or what happened to, I don't know, your lost set of keys is a mystery. When we call the Holy Trinity a mystery, we are saying that God's immensity, his awesomeness, his grandeur can never be fully grasped by the human mind. When we talk about the mysteries of the rosary, we're making the same point. These events, these things are so amazing that we can go on meditating upon them forever and we're still impacted anew by their beauty each time we pray them. St. Augustine did in fact finish his book that he was writing on the Blessed Trinity and it's filled with many insightful analogies which can help our small human minds to grasp something of who God is as Father, Son and Holy Ghost. The fact that we know that the one God is a communion of three divine persons is not something we could have worked out for ourselves. The Catholic Church didn't invent this. Like everything our church teaches, she received it from our Lord. It was a teaching he revealed. Many false religions that were founded by men, like Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism and Islam, they reject the Holy Trinity. That is because instead of accepting that the human mind can't fully comprehend the greatness of God, they change God so that he can fit their human minds all that more comfortably. Where does our Lord reveal the Holy Trinity? The most clear place is in his command at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, Go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Throughout St. John's Gospel, our Lord also explains he himself is from heaven and that he has been sent by the Father and that soon the Father and himself will send another advocate from heaven, the Holy Spirit, who will remain with them forever. There's a lot of things you can work out about Almighty God from studying creation and from reasoning. You can work out that because the world is so ordered and governed so harmoniously that there must be one all-powerful God not many gods fighting with each other. And from reason, we can work out that this one God must be almighty, eternal, unchanging and all-knowing. But it's very unlikely that someone would have ever reasoned to the conclusion that God was a trinity of three divine persons had not God himself chosen to reveal this. But because God has revealed that he is a holy trinity of three persons in one God, We can and should use our minds to try and grasp this truth, to ponder this truth, to delight in this truth. One of the analogies from St. Augustine that's most helpful was to take as a starting point the truth that God is love. He argued, if God truly is love, he has to be a communion of persons. Love is something 
interpersonal. If God were not a trinity of persons, the Bible could only say that God has love for his creatures or something like that. But the Bible says God is love and that he is love before he created anything. Think about it. If a being is completely solitary, just a single person with nothing created, how can that being be described as expressing love? Being love. But because God is love and because God is love from all eternity, he must be an everlasting and loving relationship of persons. God the Father sees himself and his knowledge of himself is so complete and entire that it is the word of God, the son of God. And the love between the father and his eternally existing son is so real that their love is the third person, the Holy Spirit. So within the one God, there is an eternal communion of love. God is one, but he is not solitary. Because God is love, he is a communion of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Even in the first page of scripture, God speaks in terms of we. Let us make man in our image. God makes Adam as a being capable of love made for relationship with a beloved, a relationship which will produce a third person as a fruit of their love, who will love them both in return. The human family is meant to be a created reflection of the Holy Trinity. In the human family there are three individual beings, but in God there's only one being. So there's a difference there. But this God exists in a communion of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This may sound like very high theology, but this belief about God as Holy Trinity being reflected in the human family has very practical implications in morality. Because a Christian marriage reflects the unbreakable communion of the Holy Trinity, we can understand why no Christian marriage can ever be broken or ended by any human power. Divorce is impossible. It's impossible because Christian marriage, the sacrament of marriage, reflects the unbreakable communion of the Holy Trinity. If a Catholic says they've got a divorce, they've just got a piece of paper because the bond of Christian marriage is a reflection of the unbreakable communion of the Holy Trinity. Let this thought take over your thinking and destroy those lies that the world around you is telling you. Christian marriage, the sacrament of marriage, cannot be broken except by death. And because Christian marriage reflects God's life-giving relationship of self-giving love, we can also understand why introducing sterilization or artificial contraception into a relationship is such a serious sin. A serious sin that needs to be confessed and renounced before receiving Holy Communion, unless you wish to live in a state of mortal sin and lead your soul to hell. Marital love is meant to be a continual showing forth of the Holy Trinity, total self-giving love. Sterilization and contraception are the exact opposites of the love that defines God. The Father's love of his Son is so fruitful that from all eternity their love is the Holy Spirit. The love of the Holy Trinity is selfless. It is completely self-giving. Contraception and sterilization are the exact opposites of the love that defines God. Introducing them into your marriage will pull your marriage away from its first likeness to God. Please keep away from such evils if you want a happy and holy marriage. The mystery of the Holy Trinity, which we contemplate today, was first revealed publicly to the Blessed Virgin Mary. God revealed this mystery to her, to her, before any other human. At the moment of the Annunciation, she was told that the Father was sending the Son within her through the power of the Holy Spirit. The angel Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overcover you with his shadow. And so the child will be called Holy, the Son of God. And so we turn to Our Lady. O Blessed Mother Mary, 
You are the sinless creation of God the Father, the mother of God the Son, the spouse of God the Holy Ghost. Help me to believe the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Help me to contemplate the work of the Holy Trinity as I pray the rosary each day. And help my family to reflect that love of the Holy Trinity, which I hope to enjoy with you for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.